Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm looking back at the film Gung Ho from 1986 starring Michael Keaton. This movie reunited film director Ron Howard with the comedic talents of Michael Keaton. They had previously worked together in 1982 in the romantic comedy Night Shift, a movie that also reunited Ron Howard with his Happy Days co-star Henry Winkler. By the way, if you've never seen Night Shift, it's a pretty funny movie that I would highly suggest. In Gung Ho, Ron Howard tried to show the unique differences between Japanese and American cultures at the time, particularly in the workplace. The basic plot of the movie takes place in a fictional town called Hadleyville in Pennsylvania. Most of the town's residents get their work from an auto plant, which unfortunately has been shut down for a while. As a side note, some of the film was recorded in Beaver and Bridgewater, Pennsylvania, and Michael Keaton is actually a native of Pennsylvania. The former foreman, Hunt Stevenson, played by Michael Keaton, goes to Tokyo with the hopes of convincing Asan Motors, a Japanese car manufacturer, to reopen the plant using the plant's original employees. The Japanese company agrees, but does so with the belief that those employees should and will work like employees do in Japan. For example, the Asan Motor Company stipulates that the workers cannot form a union, they will be paid lower wages, and they also want every employee to learn every job within the factory. And yes folks, that there is George Wendt, best known as Norm from Cheers. He's being shown how he should do a job that he already feels he knows how to do. And to top it off, they have extremely high standards of efficiency and quality. As you can imagine, while the Hadleyville employees are happy to have the, their jobs back, they're not very happy about the new expectations. The Japanese executive said to be in charge of the plant is Takahara Kaz Kazuhiro, played by Getty Watanabe. You might remember Getty as the Japanese foreign exchange student Long Duck Dong from the classic John Hughes movie Sixteen Candles. Cause has been a failure in his career thus far because it's viewed that he is too lenient on his workers. He is given the chance to redeem himself by helping to make the American plant successful. Hunt is given the job of being a liaison between the Japanese management and American workers to help convince the workers to get on board with the new rules. Hunt comes up with a great idea and he makes a pitch to Cause. If the plant can produce 15,000 cars in one month, making it as productive as the best Japanese auto plant, then the workers will all be given raises. Cause agrees, but says it's an all or nothing deal, meaning that if the workers are just one car short, they get nothing. Hunt sets up a meeting to tell the workers about the deal, and when the crowd doesn't like the idea, he ends up lying to them and tells them that if they make 13,000 cars, they will get a partial raise. This backfires on him when the crowd decides that they will just settle for the partial raise because they don't believe in their ability to hit the higher goal of 15,000 cars. Eventually, the workers discover the truth and they decide to walk off the job. Thus, it appears the venture is a failure. Or is it? Just when it looks like everything is going to end, Hunt decides to lead by example and he and Kaz go into the factory to start making cars all by themselves. The Hadleyville workers see them doing this and try to save the plant, and everyone decides to pitch in. The day comes where the cars are to be counted, and sure enough, with the final push the employees make, they hit the goal of 15,000 cars, even though the last few might need a few things fixed before they're sold to the public. One interesting fact I've read about this movie is that the Toyota executives in Japan have used Gung Ho as an example of how not to manage Americans. I find that so interesting. This is a fun movie and Michael Keaton is so great in this film. What say you? I look forward to reading your comments and thoughts about this movie. Also, I would really appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to my channel where I talk about movies, music, and television from the 70s, 80s, and yes, even sometimes the 90s. Thank you so much for watching and have a fantabulous day.